Hi everyone, Dr. Kofi here, and welcome to another episode on Tutor Med, where everything medicine is simplified. Today, I want to share some thoughts on how to learn cardiovascular medicine the smart way. I mean how to put the topics of cardiovascular medicine into perspective so that learning can be enhanced. And so let's get straight to this. Very good. And so the first thought I'd like to share is that the cardiovascular system is actually a combination of two systems. It is made up of the cardiac component, which is basically the heart and its associated structures, and then the vascular component, which is made up of the blood vessels, namely the veins, the arteries, and then the capillaries, and to some extent, made up of the lymphatic vessels, which drains excess fluid from the tissue space, ensuring that the tissue space is not edematous. And so the cardiac component can be seen to consist of the heart, which has three layers, basically, and then the conduction system of the heart, which helps the heart to beat automatically. And so this is the heart, which is basically the cardiac component, and this is a picture showing the various layers of the heart. And so let's take a look at them. Beginning with the innermost layer, we have the endocardium. Then, from the innermost layer, you move to the middle layer, the myocardium. Then after the myocardium, we have the visceral pericardium, which is also sometimes known as the epicardium. Then, we have the parietal pericardium. Between the visceral and parietal pericardium is the pericardial space which contains pericardial fluid to ensure that there is reduced friction when the heart is contracting and relaxing. There is reduced friction between the visceral pericardium and then the parietal pericardium. Then the outermost layer of the pericardium is the fibrous pericardium. It surrounds the parietal pericardium. So these are the layers of the heart. Then we move to the heart's conduction system. And so as said in our previous video, we have the sinoatrial node or the SA node, which is the pacemaker of the heart. It means in a normal heart, this node determines the rhythm and speed at which the heart should beat. It is located in the right atrium near the entry of the superior vena cava. Now the SA node connects to the AV node and the left atrium, but I want to focus on the AV node. And the AV node is responsible for delaying impulses temporarily before sending them down the ventricles through this structure known as the bundle of His. The bundle of His divides into the left bundle branch and the right bundle branch. And each of them, the left bundle branch also divides into the anterior fascicle and posterior fascicle. We've discussed this in our ECG lecture. And then each of the bundle branches end in Purkinje fibers which feeds the myocardium of the ventricles. Now what is the point here? The point is that the diseases of the cardiac system can be grouped into diseases that affect the conduction system and those that affect the various layers of the heart. And then this would help us put things into perspective. Now broadly, medical conditions can be grouped into congenital and acquired causes. And I want to dwell on the acquired causes since we are dealing with internal medicine. And so working our way from the outermost to the innermost layer of the heart, we are beginning with the cardiac component. For the pericardium, we have inflammation of the pericardium and so this is where we can learn pericarditis. And then the pericardial space can contain or can accumulate a lot of pericardial fluid and that can impair the heart's activity or the heart's function and so we can learn cardiac tamponade here. Then from the pericardium, we are working our way 
from outermost to innermost. So from the pericardium, we move to the myocardium. And so the myocardium, we can group them basically, or the diseases that affect the myocardium, we can group them basically into one, ischemic heart diseases. And the disease components we can learn here are stable angina pectoris, number two, acute coronary syndrome, which is basically made up of three conditions, which are a spectrum. We have unstable angina pectoris, we have non-ST elevation myocardial infarction, and then ST elevation myocardial infarction. So these three conditions make up acute coronary syndrome. Then we can also have vasospastic angina here. And vasospastic angina is the new term for Prince metal angina or variant angina. Then the next class of conditions that may affect the myocardium are known as cardiomyopathies. And so under the cardiomyopathies, we can learn dilated cardiomyopathy. We can learn about restrictive cardiomyopathy. And then we can talk about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So these topics can be learned here and they can be learned in perspective. From the myocardium, we move to the innermost layer, which is the endocardium. And so we can learn about infective endocarditis here. And remember the valves project from the endocardium. And so we can learn about the various valvular heart diseases here. To mention a few, we can learn about mitral stenosis or mitral regurgitation. We can learn about mitral valve prolapse. We can talk about aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation, tricuspid stenosis, tricuspid regurgitation, and the like. Now, although rheumatic fever does not affect the endocardium only or per se, we want to put it here as well so we can learn rheumatic fever here. Although rheumatic fever can cause pancarditis, in other words, it can affect all the layers of the heart, but we want to put it under the endocardium, not to say that rheumatic fever is a disease of the endocardium. It can cause pancarditis. And then all heart conditions, all chronic heart conditions, or let me see, all heart conditions can eventually lead to a syndrome in which the heart is not able to um, contract or relax or it's not able to perform its function to meet the, the, uh, the metabolic demands of the body. And that syndrome is called heart failure. So eventually, all cardiac conditions will eventually lead to heart failure. And so we can learn heart failure here. And so still on the cardiac component, remember we said the cardiac component can be subdivided into the layers that make up the heart and then the conduction pathway and so in our previous slides we have discussed the common conditions that can affect the various layers of the heart so we want to look at the common conditions that can affect the conduction pathway so i like to look at this in two blocks the first block is abnormal origins of rhythm remember we said from the very beginning that the sa node is the origin of rhythm for a normal heart and so any place in the heart which gives rhythm is an abnormal origin. So we'll look at that in that sense. Then the next thing is to look at the condition called heart blocks. And so basically what I want to say is that the conduction pathway, the disease that can affect it can be grouped into abnormal origins of rhythm and then heart blocks. What can block the conduction pathway and so when we look at abnormal origins of rhythm we can group them into those which come from structures above the ventricles and those which come from structures within the ventricles so those which come from structures above the ventricles are called supraventricular rhythms and so you can guess that since the atrium is above the ventricle atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter is a supraventricular rhythm, an abnormal rhythm. Then, what other structure is above the ventricle? The junctional node or the AV node. And so you can have abnormal origins from the junctional node 
they can be seen as AV nodal reentrant tachycardia and then AV nodal non reentrant tachycardia abbreviated as AVRT and AVNRT. We will look at these later. Then we have the ventricular rhythms and to mention a few, the rhythms that can come from the ventricles include ventricular tachycardia and then ventricular fibrillation. And so these are the common conditions that can arise from the conduction pathway as a result of abnormal origin of rhythms. So the next we will look at the heart blocks. And so for the heart blocks, we have three types basically. We have first degree heart block, second degree heart block which has two subtypes. You have Mobitz type 1 and Mobitz type 2 and then third degree heart block or complete heart block. Then this, So these are the basic, the three basic heart blocks but you can also have bundle branch blocks, either left bundle branch block or right bundle branch block. So these conditions fall under heart blocks. Then this summarizes the acquired conditions in the cardiac component. Then we can turn our minds to congenital heart diseases like ventricular septal defect, atrial septal defect, etc. And so we are done with the cardiac component. So the next component we move to is the vascular component. And so for the vascular component, we will begin with the artery. So for the artery, we have the aorta. And the conditions that can affect the aorta include aortic dissection and then aortic aneurysms whether thoracic or abdominal aorta we can also talk about a congenital condition called coarctation of the aorta here then we have a peripheral arteries for the peripheral arteries you can learn conditions like peripheral arterial disease and then acute peripheral arterial occlusion then still on the vascular component, we can talk about the various vasculitis or vasculitis, large vessel vasculitis, medium vessel vasculitis, and then small vessel vasculitis. So we move to the next type of vessel, the veins. And so here we can talk about thromboembolic events like deep venous thrombosis and then pulmonary embolism. Then we have chronic venous insufficiency, we have varicose veins, we have arterial venous fistulas. And lastly, we come to the lymphatics. That is where we can talk about the various types of lymphedema and then the various causes of lymph adenopathy. Thank you for watching this episode of Tutamed. And please do not forget to like and share our video and subscribe to our channel. Bye!